Hello, everyone. Welcome to GenScript 2017 Fall Webinar Series. I'm Claire Joe, the Marketing Specialist for Peptide Services at GenScript. It is my pleasure today to introduce Dr. James Mixon as our guest speaker. Dr. Mixon has been a professor in the Pathology Department at the University of Maryland School of Medicine since 1994. His studies were initially focused on non-viral delivery of anti-angiogenic nucleic acids with liposomes utilizing in vitro or in vivo model systems. His current research has expanded to developing novel peptides as nucleic acid carriers and as antifungal agents. Dr. Mixon has been awarded seven U.S. and European patents on gene therapy and anti-angiogenesis. He has published 56 peer-reviewed articles thus far. During the last 15 years, his laboratory has developed histidine-rich peptides as carriers of nucleic acids. Now his team is particularly interested in the mechanisms that govern the stability and dissociation of histidine lysine polyplexes. In this webinar, he will present his research findings on enhanced tumor delivery of RNAi polyplexes by histidine-rich peptide carriers. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can submit them by typing them in in a question field that you can see on your screen. So with this, I will pass the presentation over to Dr. Mixon. I would like to thank GenScript for the invitation and the audience for participating in this webinar. I have organized this webinar to cover a wide range of topics from molecular interactions of polyplexes to translational applications of nanoparticles. Histidine lysine peptides or HK peptides are biodegradable carriers of nucleic acids. The lysines were incorporated in the HK to bind to the negatively charged phosphates of nucleic acids while initially the histidines were incorporated to buffer and lyse the endosomes. Because the HK peptides were made on a peptide synthesizer, the ratio of histidines to lysines, the peptide length, and most importantly, the sequence pattern can be precisely defined, and we think these factors are important. Prior to discussing some recent findings concerning HK as a carrier of siRNA and plasmids targeting tumors, I will first cover the work of Dr. Chow, who showed that hydrogen bonding was important in stabilizing HK polyplexes. What stimulated this study was a prior observation which showed that HK plasmid complexes maintain high transfection efficiency even with pre-exposure to serum for 24 hours. In contrast, the polylysine plasmid complex had a marked reduction in transfection within five minutes of serum exposure. This result led to the hypothesis that histidines may engage in non-ionic interactions with nucleic acids to maintain the intact polyplexes. As a result, we explored the interaction between HK peptides and siRNA. We compared linear and branch HK peptides. An example of the four branch HK peptide is H3K plus H4B, which is an effective carrier with low toxicity. As a control for the branch HK, we used a branched asparagine lysine peptide, which substituted asparagines for histidines. Please note that the four branches emanate from a three lysine core. With gel electrophoresis, we determined that HK polyplexes resisted serum-induced degradation. 
while the asparaging lysine polyplexes did not. Prior to electrophoresis, the polyplexes were incubated with 50% serum for 1, 4, 6, and 24 hours. The peptide siRNA molar ratio was selected for 100% retention in the wells. Polyplexes in lane 2 act as a control and were not incubated with serum, whereas polyplexes in lanes 3 through 6 were incubated in serum for different times. The branch HK polyplexes on your left show neg negligible degradation in serum at the 24 hour time point there is minimal there is a minimal decrease in the signal compared to the control in lane 2 in contrast the, the branch asparagine lysine polyplexes on your right showed a time dependent degradation at six hours there was a marked decrease in the signal whereas at 24 hours the signal was barely visible this suggests that histidines have a role in stabilizing the hk poly polyplexes we next studied whether the gene silencing activity was correlated to the stability of the poly polyplexes incubated in serum. Again, polyplexes were exposed to 50% serum for 4 or 24 hours. Then the polyplexes carrying siRNA targeting luciferase were used to treat luciferase expressing cancer cells. Now, the solid bar on your left represents untreated cells. With the use of the branch HK as a carrier, luciferase expression was inhibited by 90% and the gene silencing ability was maintained even with 24 hours of pre-exposure to serum. Although the branch asparagine lysine was not as effective as the branch HK at silencing. More importantly, the asparaging carrier showed a 60% reduction in gene silencing with 24 hours of serum incubation. The results demonstrated that gene silencing activity of the polyplexes were correlated with their stability. We then tried to figure out what makes HK peptides better carriers. We studied the binding of two peptides to siRNA with isothermal titration calorimetry. We titrated the peptide into an siRNA solution at physiologic pH. Initially, when there was an excess of siRNA to peptide, the binding was exothermic. On, you, on your left, the level of exothermicity initially was minus 80 kcal per mole. And the interaction initially was likely bimolecular. We were particularly interested in this early phase of interaction prior to, poly, to the polyplex formation. The endothermic peak was due to charge neutralization induced aggregation. We think this peak in the negative phase may be due to charge heterogeneity of branch peptides and the structure of the siRNA. Analogous to the branch HK peptides, the branch Asparagine has a similar binding pattern as seen in the insert, perhaps due to its ability to form hydrogen bonds. However, the level of exothermic reaction is only one-fifth of the branch HK peptide. 
the level of exothermic reaction can be correlated to the differences in the stability of these two polyplexes in serum. With calorimetry, we also compared the interactions of branch HK and branch polylysine peptides to SI RNA. Whereas HK peptides showed exothermic binding at peptide SI, SI RNA little ratios up to two, the branch polylysine showed an endothermic reaction. The polylysine data supported the earlier work of Bloomfield's group, which showed that the ionic oligolysine binding to DNA was entropy driven. This also indicates that the favorable thermodynamic interaction between HK and siRNA was likely non ionic. To eliminate the branching effect, we compared linear HK peptides with another peptide in which histidines were replaced by alanines. The side chain of alanine cannot form a hydrogen bond with siRNA. The linear alanine lysine siRNA binding was endothermic, as shown on your right, which was similar to polylysine. In contrast, the initial interaction between linear H2K and siRNA was exothermic, which was similar to the branch HK peptide. Calorimetry was also done at lower pHs in which the histidines were protonated. At pH 5, 90% of histidines or charged. When the pH was decreased, the heat release was enhanced. At pH 6, the initial heat release was minus 90 kcal per mole, as opposed to minus 80 kcal per mole at pH 7. Whereas at pH 5, the initial release was minus 120. If the if the non-ionic interactions were due to histidine-histidine interactions or stacking, one would expect a decrease in the exothermicity due to charge-charge repulsion. Please note that the endothermic part peak decreases significantly as the pH is reduced. To determine whether the non-ionic interactions were due to hydrogen bonding, we labeled the nitrogens with N15 on select histidines on the branches of H3K4B. The interactions between the labeled nitrogens and the adjacent non-exchangeable non hydrogens are sensitive to hydrogen bonding. With 2D NMR, two histidine signals of the free peptide were observed and are shown or and are shown shown in blue. With the addition of siRNA to the peptide, the N delta one signal in red was shifted downfield in the direction of deprotonation, indicating the occurrence of a hydrogen bond between the peptide and siRNA. Furthermore, this indicates that the N delta 1 nitrogen is a hydrogen donor, not a hydrogen acceptor. A similar result was observed at a lower pH, except that the shift downfield was greater, consistent with the calorimetry data. Please also note that there is no shift down field with the N epsilon 2 nitrogen. So that nitrogen does 
uh, there's no hydrogen bond bonding that occurs with that nitrogen. This model of HK siRNA polyplex illustrates their stability in serum and their disruption in endosomes. Stability of the polyplex is the result of local interactions of hydrogen and ionic interactions. What groups on the siRNA form hydrogen bonds with the HK peptide? We don't know, but calorimetry studies comparing DNA with siRNA indicate that the two hydroxyl groups on the ribose are important. Oxygens on the negative phosphates and nitrogens on the nucleobases are also possible candidates. Besides HK polyplexes, non-ionic interactions have been shown to have important roles with arginine-rich polyplexes. In addition to the importance of hydrogen and ionic bonding for localized interactions, other bonds such as pi pi interactions, histidine histidine, and hydrophobic interactions are likely to occur within the polyplex. Once the HK polyplex is in the acidic endosomes, two important events are likely to occur. As the histidines become protonated, disruption of the polyplex occurs due to charge-charge repulsion. And secondly, the increased charge on the peptide likely leads to lysis of the endosome. Both doctors Ling and Chow had significant roles in developing a targeting HK as a delivery agent for siRNA in vivo. Although hydrogen bond stabilization of HK polyplexes does provide a promising baseline for nucleic acid delivery in vivo, the next two sections demonstrate additional modifications that might aid in the stability and targeting of HK, siRNA, and plasmid polyplexes. As stated previously, the four-branch H3K with a repeating pattern of three histidines and a lysine were, was particularly effective as a carrier of siRNA. This was based on in vitro and in vivo studies. In your lower left, the branch HK in complex with RAF1 siRNA inhibited tumor size in a mouse model by about 40%. In the lower left, the H3K4B siRNA polyplex induced low levels of cytokines compared to other branch HK siRNA polyplexes. So not all branch HK polyplexes are the same in inducing cytokines. To increase the half-life of the polyplex in vivo and improve the anti-tumor efficacy, we examined several pegylation patterns and one in which the peg and cyclic RGD was attached to each arm was the most effective carrier of siRNA. Although the unmodified branch HK combined with siRNA formed stable polyplexes, the modified RGD peg HK peptide with siRNA did not form a stable polyplex. As a result, we had to combine another HK peptide, H2K4B, with a modified HK and siRNA to form a, poly a stable polyplex. These modifications enhance the half-life and the tumor accumulation of the modified HK polyplex, which we now call name RPHK polyplex. The improved pharmacokinetics and tumor accumulation translated into greater silencing 
with the RPHK siRNA polyplex targeting luciferase that was stably expressed in tumor xenografts. We measured luciferase expression immediately before, that's on your left, and 48 hours later on your right after IV injections of polyplexes with the Zenizen system. With the aqueous group, there was little change with treatment. With the unmodified H3K4B siRNA group, there was a 20% reduction in luciferase expression. And with mice treated with RPHK siRNA, there was a marked down regulation of luciferase by about 80%. Besides cyclic RGD PEG modifications, cross-linking of cysteines at the end of the branch HK also augmented silencing activity. Luciferase silencing was also corroborated by silence, silencing RAF1 mRNA and protein in tumor xenografts after administering the polyplexus IV, whereas the RAF1 mRNA was decreased by 90%, the protein was decreased by nearly 80% by the RPHK poly polyplex that had incorporated RAF1 siRNA. Whereas most investigators have abandoned the use of plasma-based therapies in favor of mRNA and siRNA, Dr. Ling in my lab determined that the HK does provide an extremely efficient method to deliver plasmids to tumors in vivo. Using a standard transfection assay, the H2K4B polyplex, which has a, uh, the H2K4B has a, it's a polyp four branch peptide that has a repeating sequence in its branches of two histidines followed by lysine. Uh, this was in con this peptide in complex with a plasmid expressing luciferase gave very high transfection, particularly at higher peptide to DNA ratios where the poly polyplex was positively charged. In contrast, cells transfected with the linear H2K poly polyplex had little to no luciferase expression. However, the delivery of luciferase expressing plasmids to MDA MB435 tumor xenografts was significantly more effective with H2K than with H2K4B. After the tumors grew to 75 cubic millimeters, HK peptides in complex with luciferase expressing plasmids were injected IV into mice. 24 hours later, the mice were euthanized, tissues including tumors were removed, and luciferase activity was measured. Luciferase levels were 14 times higher in the tumors of mice injected IV with H2K poly polyplexes compared to H2K or B polyplexes. Please also note that with the H2K group, the expression of luciferase in the lungs was significantly lower as well as the luciferase expression in the spleen was significantly lower than the four branch uh, polyplex. I should also like to note that uh, we found, we have found that H2K is a significantly better carrier in all the tumors that we have tested, including MDA and B231, a mouse uh, breast tumor 4T1, a, a human lung cancer line, 
uh, a rat uh, glioma cell line and, and um, using a similar express, exper, experimental design as just described, we then investigated whether the increased luciferase expression in the tumor was due to higher expression within localized areas of the tumor or was more widespread. Immunostaining studies of luciferase indicated that H2K plasmid polyplexes were widespread throughout the tumor. In contrast, there was significantly less staining for luciferase in the tumor when the H2K4B polyplex was administered to the tumor-bearing mice. Initially, it was not clear what exactly the mechanism was that resulted in H2K being such an effective carrier. While writing a review on ligands, I noticed similarities between the H2K peptide and the NRP1 or neuropylin 1 mediated transport of cyclic tumor penetrating peptides reported by Ruslati's group. To determine whether NRP1 had a row, we injected the tumor bearing mice with NRP1 antibody, which would, which would block the transport of H2K polyplexes if transported by this pathway. 30 minutes after the antibodies were injected, the mice were injected IV with H2K TD tomato expressing plasmid polyplexes. After 24 hours, TD tomato expression was examined in, frozen, in the frozen sections of the tumors. 96% of the TD tomato expression was blocked in the tumors of the mice who received the NRP antibody in, as compared to the control group that received the IgG antibody. This slide shows a schematic of a potential NRP transport mechanism for H2K polyplexes. Of note, there was marked up regulation of NRP1 in tumor endothelial cells. At least two events need to occur for transport of H2K poly polyplexes in tumor cells. First, the H2K peptide on the surface of the polyplex needs to be proteolytically cleaved by a trypsin-like enzyme on the C-terminal side of the lysine. And second, the proteolytically cleaved peptide enables the KHHK motif to bind to the neuropylin 1 receptor. This results in endocytosis and likely transcytosis of the cargo through the tumor endothelium and throughout the tumor. Why would the linear H2K polyplex be transported through the tumor, yet the branch polyplex not? After all, they both have the same repeating sequence of KHHK. We have found that the branch H2K4B plasmid polyplexes are much more resistant to proteolytic digestion compared to linear branch H2K plasmid poly polyplexes. This slide summarizes the similarities and differences between HKSIRNA and plasmid poly polyplexes. Both HKSIRNA and plasmid polyplexes require ionic and non-ionic interactions. There are several differences in the biophysical properties marked in red between the plasmid and siRNA polyplexes for optimal delivery. Degree of branching, the NP ratio, 
and the zeta potential. potential. Many of these differences are due to forming polyplexes, which are stable. Consequently, these biophysical properties may change with further advances in carrier design. I've already mentioned the contributions of Drs. Ling and Chow. I would also like to thank Dr. Kelly Holm, who runs the NMR facility at the University of Maryland, as well as Dr. Scoria, who did the chemical modifications on the HK peptide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mixon, for the wonderful talk. We'll have a Q&A session. Please type in your questions in the question field. You're, while you're putting in your questions, I would like to introduce uh, GenScript Pipeline Services. At GenScript, we provide custom peptide synthesis service, including self-penetrating peptide synthesis. We can synthesize peptides up to 200 amino acids long and provide more than 300 modifications that will help with your research needs. Uh, we provide purity options from true to higher than 98%, as well as quantity range from milligram to kilogram. With our automated peptide synthesizers and assist of microwave technology, we have the capability to synthesize high-quality peptides and deliver them to you in as fast as five days. With our ISO 901 2008 certified photo quality management platform that ensures each custom peptide is triple checked with quality via both MS and HPLC analysis after each step during peptide purification and quality control procedures. In addition, we also package all peptides in our trademarked argon shield packaging tubes to pr protect your peptide from any potential oxidation and delinquencies during delivery. In the past 15 years, over 10,000 scientists worldwide have used our peptide services and published more than 1,400 peer-reviewed publications. For more uh, information, please visit our website, www.genscript.com. Uh, you can also directly email me at clairez at genscript.com for any questions that you may have. Finally, at the end of the presentation, you will receive a brief survey. We encourage you to fill out this survey, and this will help us improve our future webinar series. With that, uh, I would like to turn the presentation control over to Dr. Mixon for a Q&A session. Okay. I can't uh, see the questions, so you may have to uh... Sure. Um, so, Dr. Mixon, we have a question here. Can you compare the interaction of nucleases arginine-rich and HK peptide? Uh, yes. Uh, the uh, the arginine-rich peptides, uh, Lohmann's group compared uh, oligolysine with uh, oligoarginine binding to DNA. And they found uh, in a series of papers that oligoarginine uh, binding to DNA was not as salt dependent uh, as the oligolysine. Uh, they speculated that it was uh, due to hydrogen bonding between the guanidino group of the arginine and the DNA. Now, to the best of my knowledge, it hasn't been shown where, whether uh, 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 I, uh, uh, if the 2D NMR has been done with the uh, similar to uh, with the uh, arginine uh, peptide as we did with the HK peptide, but I suspect that uh, uh, hydrogen bonding would uh, 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 be shown with 2D uh, NMR. The other thing is uh, uh, I'm not sh since. Uh, the guanidino group can be both a, a hydrogen acceptor as well as a hydrogen donor, very similar to the imidazole and the asparagine group. Uh, that uh, also remains to be shown uh, uh, if, it, uh, what, uh, if it is a hydrogen donor or acceptor. An another difference uh, uh, between these uh, uh, two polyplexes is that 
Uh, arginine, of course, is uh, totally protonated at physiologic pH, and at uh, lower, uh, at uh, more acidic pHs, uh, such as uh, what would occur in uh, many types of uh, endosomes, uh, there is no further uh, protonation. Uh, whereas the HK peptide is uh, only partially protonated at physiologic pH, most of it uh, coming from the uh, lysine groups, so that uh, when they, uh, as I said earlier, when they uh, uh, do, uh, uh, when they do get an endosome, they do become protonated, and this almost acts as a spring to disrupt the uh, polyplex. So this is one advantage, at least that, uh, or at least one difference that, uh, uh, at least uh, between uh, oligoarginines and uh, HK peptides once they get into acidic uh, endosomes. Uh, thank you. Now we have another question. What is the toxicity of HK polyplexes, including their immunogen immunogenicity? Well, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's a good question. The uh, the uh, it's relatively minor, but both in vitro and in vivo at the uh, peptide to siRNA or DNA ratios that we use that are effective. And compared to uh, non-biodegradable polymers, uh, such as P uh, PI, including jet PI, it's, uh, there's significantly less toxicity. And uh, we've looked at toxicity uh, mainly uh, LDL, uh, LDH released uh, uh, histologically. We've looked at the uh, cells as well as looking at the uh, 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 various organs and uh, and uh, chemistries of the uh, 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 of the animal. Uh, it's also much uh, less toxic. The L uh, uh, HK peptide compared to the D counterpart. So. Uh, uh, it uh, being biodegradable is important for uh, uh, its uh, reduced toxicity. Of course, just like every uh, uh, cationic peptide, it is important uh, that you use as low as peptide to DNA ratio as possible because cat cationic peptides at higher concentrations, including HK, may show toxicity. I also mentioned briefly in the talk that uh, uh, cationic uh, pep polyplexes may induce cytokines uh, with SIR RNA. It's through uh, uh, the toll-like receptor 7. Uh, some HK peptides through buffering the endosome may attenuate the, uh, this activity significantly. Of course, SIR RNA can be altered as well uh, through uh, 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 modifications, and this can reduce the cytokine in, uh, induction significantly. Finally, uh, the uh, everyone when anyone deals with peptides, uh, uh, one of course is interested in the generation of antibodies. Does it generate antibodies? And of course, this is uh, I. I certainly cannot, I can only partially answer this question, but uh, when uh, a, a company we uh, work with uh, attempted to raise antibodies with complete Freud's adjuvant, uh, they were uh, uh, with the HK, with a branch HK, as well as with the branch HK polyplex, they were unable to. Uh, and I, we have also uh, in, uh, we have also looked at motifs looking uh, of the HK, looking at uh, HLA uh, 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 pat for, H, uh, for possible binding with HLA uh, haplotypes. And at, at, at most, there's weak binding with one, just one or two of the minor uh, haplotypes. So, uh, 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 at least thus far, it has, uh, in our attempts, uh, it has shown very little immunogenicity. But I think any time you uh, deal with a, 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 a novel peptide, that has to be a, a concern.
Thank you for the answer. I think we have time for one more question. So um, there's a question, what additional modifications would you make to improve the HK carrier of nucleases? Yes, I mean, uh, there are uh, many uh, additional modifications that I uh, would consider, but at the top of the list would be uh, the addition of uh, uh, disulfide groups or hydrophobic groups. Uh, uh, we, I, I briefly mentioned in the talk that uh, we found that uh, uh, the addition of uh, sulfhydro groups to, uh, or cysteine groups that uh, were oxidized uh, 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 added uh, about 20% silencing activity when present in the branch HK peptide. So, uh, if uh, so, if we got 60% without uh, oxidation of the cysteines, it went up to 80% with silencing. So, uh, we would, uh, uh, Dr. Wagner's group in Munich, as well as other investigators, have systematically studied this uh, 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 the addition of reducible cysteines and hydrophobic groups to various locations of the polymer to enhance the stability of the polyplex. I think I would follow a similar plan uh, to, uh, to enhance the stability for the HK polyplex and peptide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mixon, for the wonderful talk. And um, this will be the end of our webinar today. If you have any further questions, please um, directly email me to clarazia.genscript.com. Thank you all for attending our webinar. And thank you, Dr. Mixon, again for your wonderful talk. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you uh, to the audience.